Hi, I'm Bartosz from Pixelated Milk and today I will give you a brief overview of our newest combat demo for Regalia of Men and Monarchs. This combat demo releases November 2nd to all qualifying Kickstarter backers. Before we begin, please remember that this demo offers a very, very early look at the game and we still have a whole year of development ahead of us. Animations, sounds, graphics, effects and some gameplay elements are still placeholders or in work in progress phase. With that out of the way, let's jump into the game. The demo has two distinct combat scenarios for you to play. One is easier and the other one is more difficult. Today I will focus on the first scenario and leave the second one for you to discover. So let's dive into the scenario. So Regalia, as you probably know, is a turn-based strategy game inspired by the games like Disgaea or Final Fantasy Tactics. So the combat is turn-based and it places plays on a square grid. And a lot of the elements are what you would expect from a strategy RPG, but others not quite so much. For example, we place a lot of emphasis on abilities and skills which influence a grid somehow. So there are skills which spawn stuff, place traps, place impossible objects and things like that. For example, K, who is the main hero of the game, has an inspire ability. And the Inspire ability lets him place a banner. And this banner has an aura again, around it itself, as you can see. And this aura buffs everyone in that aura with an empowered effect, which basically increases the damage. So, the second thing, which is interesting, I think, about our battle system is that we have line of sight implemented in the game. So, Positioning is very important, especially on smaller maps like this, because if you if you do not think uh, strategically about your positioning, you can end up in a position when well, you cannot use an ability because you have no line of sight. So let's gain the empowered ability. As you can see, or as you will see in a second, the one of the enemies, the Ice Incarnate, has just used the Frozen Labyrinth ability, and this has spawned ice block, ice blocks on the battlefield. And those ice blocks are impossible, can't be destroyed. They block movement, they block line of sight. And what the Ice Elemental, uh, I'm sorry, the Ice Incarnate has tried to do is isolate Kai from the others. And as you can see, she succeeded. So. Now we have ice blocks spawned here for, for three turns and Kai has to, well, think of something really quick or he will be in a bad position. So we advance with our other characters and now zombies act. Zombies are the other type of enemy you will face in this scenario and zombies is, are, well, slow and stupid so they are not a major threat alone but when they gang up on you, they can be really dangerous. So now we're back to K. And another interesting fact about our battle system is that we do not have a regular attack ability. So in other games, what you would expect is you would have an attack ability with K and that will let you attack with your sword. And we do have it, well, in some way in Regalia, it's called Rent, but this is a skill, so it basically it's a skill which lets K use his sword, but this comes with additional benefits, so this deals damage based on your weapon damage, and it also applies various debuffs, so this, for example, applies slots to your enemy. And this is true for all characters and all abilities, so we try to move away from just regular damage stuff, because this creates, well, quite boring combats, but instead every single one of our abilities, with minor exceptions, deal more uh, than just deal damage. For example, Command, which is a signature ability, and signature basically means that there's no cooldown on the ability. Command, which is Kai's signature, lets him buff friendly targets or debuff enemy targets, right? 
and then you have bang which lets him shoot his gun and this applies weaken to the target which reduces damage and so on and so forth so we try to create skills that are more interesting than just straight up damage skills so let's proceed with the combat So I will use here another of the great influencing ability called Blazing Barrier. This will create a fireball on the battlefield which will damage all the zombies who will hopefully try to approach Queen in just a second. As you can see here we have the range the zombie but because I didn't think this well through kind of blocks my line of sight to the zombie and that's it for my activation. So the Ice Incarnate doesn't really have to do anything. Her frozen ability is on cooldown. And by the way, you can check the cooldowns of all combatants at any time you wish. So you can see that her frozen labyrinth is still on cooldown. And you can also see the skills of all your enemies and the status of your combatants. So now it's time for Queen to act, and Queen is basically a very heavily armored tank. So instead of moving forward, let's move backwards and wait for the zombies to approach us. And as you can see, zombies have a trick of their own meat toss. And this basically lets a zombie throw a hunk of meat at the target, damage him even if he's out of range. And the zombie has marched into the firewall and this has damaged him. We're back to K. Let's bring the zombies down. And as you can see, Alice here has received Fleet. And this is because Kay has a passive ability and every character in the game has his own passive ability. And in case of Kay, his passive generates one stack whenever he uses a skill. When he gets three of those stacks, he grants a random passive pos positive buff to a random friendly combatant of the battlefield. So he used three skills during this battle and that's because Alice has received fleet. So let's just play with the zombies a bit, move forward. We're back to Alice, and now what I would like to show you is how you, how you set skill combos in, a, in our game, and this is another mechanism that we think is interesting. So here, one of the zombies stands in the firewall, and here you, there's a, another one. And, Alice has a skill called Inferno, which basically has a large area of effect, right? But, as you can see, we have problem with line of sight, but still, let's do this. There's an under move button in the game, by the way, which lets you position yourself more intelligently. And because now Alice has fleet on herself, her movement is much, much larger. So let's, let's move, trying to avoid the... the the firewall we have placed ourselves. Oh, so go back. Let's let's kill that zombie, and I will I will show you how you set a, set up a skill combo. So we have an authority points system in the game, and authority basically lets you do two things in battle. You they are used. Uh, to power ultimate abilities, and every character has an ultimate ability of his own, but they also let you blitz. And blitz is a special action with, which lets a character use skills twice or more during a single activation, right? So, let's see, this zombie here has 26 points of health. Alice has a nice signature ability called Firefly, and Firefly, as you can see, chains to different targets, but it also applies fiery amplification to the primary target. 
and this increases damage received from Alice's skills by 25%. So now she will deal increased she will deal increased damage to the target. And in order to use this, let's lose, let's use blitz. So I will blitz now. Authority was used, and now I can act again. This is very very helpful because now I can use Inferno and use that 25% bonus and hit the zombie for massive damage and bring him down. And as you can see, other zombies, the death of their fellow zombie triggered cannibalism. And this basically generates shields for themselves. And let's stop here for a, for a bit and talk about shields. So in Regalia, another interesting thing is that you cannot regain health in any way. So there's no healing or healing potions, but you do get shields, and shields basically act as your second health bar. And they can be generated in various ways on the battlefield. So for zombies, they generate 10% of their shields whenever they their uh, friendly zombie dies. So that's what happened. So Diego now has two targets nicely set up, so he can use his Starshot ability which is also an AoE, deals reduced damage, but it also slows them down, so you have seen that their shield points have mitigated the damage dealt by the tar shot, but they are still slowed, and zombies are slow by default, and when they are slowed in addition, they, are, they will be very, very slow. So the Ice Incarnate again is annoying, and isolates Quinn this time, and as you can see, this was very effective, because I cannot reach those two zombies now. So let's exit this labyrinth. And let's use Shield Other ability. So Shield Other is another way to generate shield points for character on the battlefield. So let's make sure Alice doesn't die. There we go. We have generated a tiny amount of shields for Alice, or for ourselves. And this zombie was not very intelligent at all, moving straight through those firewalls and almost killing itself. But well, that's what zombies do. So the firewalls have expired. And we're back to K. So let's try to force them off. Let's use our gun. Now the zombie goes down, so cannibalism kind of triggers for the others. Now let's press him on the ice incarnate. And well. Let's try to kill those zombies as well using our trusty firefly. So another one goes down. And then we're winning! So Diego acts. And Diego has an interesting passive because he his passive gains stacks whenever he uses his quickshot ability, which is his signature, and he gains one stack for each cell between him and the target. So the further away he is from the target when he shoots, the better. So let's try this now. Of course, we are blocked by this obstacle, so let's move forward. As you can see, we have gener generated four stacks of overconfidence, and those stacks are used to power up his other skills. So, for example, for tar shot and cobra shot abilities, they increase the duration of the um, debuff the skills apply, and for the ultimate ability, it increases the range and also the, the damage. So, let's press on. So the Ice Incarnate has decided to move, she uses a Blizzard ability, which is really powerful. Slows down, deals damage, and now, what's also interesting is that we are inside of her, of her aura. So, you can see it here, it's the Children Aura. And the Children Aura immediately stops the movement of any character that tries to... Uh, that moves inside the range of the aura. So, Queen has no problem with this, because she, she wants to move as closely as possible, so she will get stopped, but 
it does matter. But you will see why it matters in just a second when Alice tries to move. So now let's let's shut this elemental down. I'm sorry, incarnate. So Quinn has an ability called Shield Slam, and Shield Slam deals damage, but it also applies stunned if the target is taunted. And it just happens that the signature ability of Quinn, Engage, applies taunted to the target. So let's set up a chain uh, a skill combo again. Let's open with the Engage ability, which is mitigated by Ice Elemental's Incarnate Shields. Let's use Blitz. And now let's Shield Slam. And as you can see, the Ice Incarnate is now stunned, which significantly decreases how dangerous she is. So the one of the remaining zombies make tosses again. So this zombie basically was slowed, and as, as I have said, the zombies have a movement of three, and what happens if, with slow is mm, it reduces their movement by three, so it reduces it to zero, which basically means a slowed zombie does not move at all. So now we're back with K, and let's use his Inspire ability, placing a banner, and buffing our allies again. So, as you can see, a lot of the effects are now present on the grid, but fortunately you can mix and match, you can select what you want to, to be displayed and not or not, so, for example, I can turn off the Chosen Aura off, I can turn the Protector Aura of Queen off, and I can turn them all, all off if I want. So let's leave the Chosen on only. So now, Alice, mm, it's Alice activation, and you will see now why this aura of the Ice Incarnate is so annoying. It stops movement immediately, so if she tries to move, well, she's slowed, so again, you won't see that, but let's use a little cheat and extend the movement of her. And now let's try to move out of the Chosen Aura, and as you will see, she's immediately stopped, so she won't get that she won't be able to run away that easily. So instead, let's try to... Let's buff Quinn with Fire Shield. Fire Shield applies deterrence, and deterrence basically damages any target which damages uh, the owner, so this is perfect for a tank. So Diego. So Diego has four stacks of his overconfidence, and Let's show the final use for the authority points, the ultimate ability. Every ultimate ability requires one authority point to use. Diego has four stacks, which increases the range of his ultimate, which is great because every single one of those enemies is now in range. It cannot miss, it ignores line of sight, and it scales its damage with the overconfidence stacks. So it's now a good time to use it. And let's advance. So the eyes incarnate was stunned. She wasn't able to. Uh, she was not able to act. And now the fire shield activates. And as you can see, Queen has gained 10 shield points in this activation. This is because her Protector ability generates 5% of maximum shields for herself at the start of each activation, but she also generates additional shield points for every adjacent enemy, so she wants to be in the heat of battle, so in this case she generated a lot of shield points. And this setup is perfect for her King Step ability, which damages all targets around her and also applies debuffs. So yes, we are winning this. And again, Chilson is triggering, so we cannot leave. K activates. Let's see. Let's try to kill this, this incarnate. Finish her off. Great, she's dead. 
And Kai's passive triggers, triggers again. Diego acts. Let's show you the final ability of him, of his. The Cobra Shot. The Cobra Shot basically deals heavy damage and in addition to that it applies poison. The duration scales with his overconfidence stacks. And poison is really cool in our game because it ignores all resistances and in addition it ignores all shield points on the target. So if the zombie had a lot of shield points it would still damage his health, which is great. And we're back to Quinn. Let's finish up this zombie with style, with Inferno. I can fly, hopefully. Yay! So he's now dead. This zombie is almost dead. Just one health point. He will hit Quinn and kill himself because of the fire shield. So that's it for the combat preview, or rather for this scenario. There's also the second scenario in the game, in the combat preview, which is completely different from this one, yeah, and it's, mu it's much more difficult. Yeah, you will be facing a completely different set of enemies, but I will leave that for you to discover. The demo releases on November 2nd, on Monday. All quali qualifying backers, so all backers who uh, are at the $35 pledge or higher, will get access to the demo. And as I've said, uh, it's very early, but we would love to hear your feedback. We would love to hear what you like and what you didn't like. There's a whole set of new forums dedicated to the combat preview feedback. So please make your voice heard. We'll do our best to improve the combat, make the game as best as we can. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention.